Hi, we're back, and I'm trying to speak louder than I normally would, but I think my voice is just quiet in general. <laughs> so I will be turning the volume up through the final test, final uh, render in Premiere. So I wanted to just tilt this tower now to get a exact precise tilt we could have done this before we beveled and extruded but that's okay all I did was go into my front front camera and grab the verts on top here by going right click and dragging to vertex and pulling it over. Now I'm just lining it up here. And we'll go about there. We can delete that, duplicate this. And it's positive. Now, duplicating is Control D, always Control D, duplicate, Control D, Control D, Control D. We can get as many as we want. Uh, this is obviously facing the wrong way. So if we just press E on our rotate tool. Notice this spins. We want it to spin this way. Uh, whoops. Which is the it's the green handle. And the green handle means the Y axis. Which means there's a imagine the Y is shooting up. It means we spin around that axis. The red one spins around the axis. So on the Y, if we 180 over here in the channel box editor, on the rotate Y, just give it a 180 spin. There you go. And now, uh, I actually think it should be slightly taller. So let's, no, no, we're good. I'll shut up. <laughs> uh, we're going to now, you can't really tell in this photograph, but if you look online, this crossbar goes through the pillars. It's not like one piece of wood nailed to the side here. So what we need to do is let's delete this for now because we are going to work on this one and the key in 3D is to always work smart not hard. Uh, you <laughs> want to work hard but you don't want to brute force your way. You do the same work on two and then try to match it. So we'll do all the work we need to do on this one and then we'll duplicate it and move it over here. So this crossbar, we need to cut a hole through here. Now if we just, oops, if we can hold right, go down to face and we grab this I grab this and just hit delete it's this giant hole so let me see here mm. So 
sadly we're stuck here on an edge. So we're going to do some fancy work here. First, let's figure out Let's figure out where the beam is going to sit in. So front, we'll go to the front view by pressing spacebar, left clicking and dragging down and going to front view here. Or you can, when you're in perspective, you can just press spacebar and go to your front camera down here and grabbing that. So we need to put an edge loop here and here. So I've shown you where that is in Edit Mesh. Uh, sorry, Mesh Tools, Insert Edge Loop. And I've even shown you how to add it to your shell by pressing Control, Shift, and left clicking. And that'll put it up here. But I'd like to show you how I do it. And that's, I hold Shift. Hold shift, you want to right mouse button, click down and hold it, and it's right here. Insert edge loop tool. That's, and you don't have to do any menu work. So let's just line this up like uh, here. We'll do another one right here. And let's say you put it here and you mess up, but you don't want to delete it and you just want to learn how to fix that. You can double click, select your edge by going right mouse button up to edge here. Double click that edge so you get all of it. And then you have this thing called in mesh tools slide edge and that will keep it in this diagonal line instead of doing world it'll slide it along here and if you just use your middle mouse button hold it down and move it left or right and as as well if you hold control and do it it'll do it in smaller increments and then you can line it up and there you go so now that we have that let's grab this and this i think so yeah So find, if you go into the top view, again, hold space, left mouse button, top. You can find the middle edge loop here, and we're going to be getting rid of two of these edges, or faces. So these two faces that sit on either side of this edge, I'm just going to select them. And do the same on this side. that's it yeah remember when you're selecting multiple components when you hold shift you can add to your selection control will subtract so select those faces and just hit delete now you have this uh, nice hole and uh, to get, I mean, this is dirty to just keep it like this. So the best, the best way to fix this, we need to now create a bridge here. And that's the exact name of the tool. So if you just select all these edges, double click, and that will select the edge loop. And then double click the other side 
if you hold edit mesh up here in the menu bar you'll find a bridge tool you can also find it if you hold shift and right click and hold and go down to bridge that'll give you this usually broken looking bridge <laughs> that's because we're not done uh, here in this menu if you just change the offset it'll correct how the faces are lining up and then we don't need a shit ton of divisions so we can kill all the divisions here and now we have a clean hole now the bridge function won't work let me just delete this and prove to you something if uh, I go like that so now we technically on this side have one two three four five six seven edges and on this side we have one two three four five six the bridge command won't work unless you have equal amount of edges between two open holes that'll give you an error there it is, says equal number of border edges so let's do that again we hold shift after we select both holes double click double click hold shift right click and go to bridge we change the offset so we can correctly match each edge with each opposite edge and then we delete the divisions by dragging it to zero or you can just type zero there you go now sharp edges like this again don't exist so let's get rid of those and we're going to select all of these edges we're gonna bevel them bevel oops so remember bevel is shift right click bevel or mesh tools or sorry edit mesh bevel and feel free to add this to your shelf control shift left click we got bevel up here now it kind of broke everything or so it looked like that's okay let's uh, just want to test something here yeah there we go so let's in order to get this bevel working how we want it to let's add an edge loop inside of here so uh, just grab this edge this is uh, another tool called edge ring and split you can uh, split a, an edge loop or sorry an edge ring this is an edge loop and this is a ring of edges so you can use uh, where is it here mesh tools insert edge loop and put it in yourself but you're not going to get it right in the middle so what I like to do when I need something directly in the middle I just grab a single edge I go to uh, I've never went to the menus actually for this hmm. 
Yeah, I don't know. So I'll teach you the only way I know how. Grab the edge, hold control, right click, and then we go to edge ring utilities because we're dealing with an edge ring, and we want to split it. So it's it's grab the edge, control, right click, edge ring utilities, edge ring and split. that will put it right in the middle now let's agree grab these edges and we grab both sides this side and this side and now do the bevel again why doesn't it work it's only beveling some of it. Hmm. That's confusing me. Yeah, it's probably better we do it that way. It's see it's only beveling the top. But when we only select the edges, it does this how we want it to. I don't know. It's confusing. So let's do it a different way. We want this effect. So we can select this face, and if you double click select a face next to it, you get this entire ring. So let's do that with both sides in here, and then we're going to extrude. If you don't remember, if you didn't add it to your shelf, it's edit mesh. Extrude. There's the shortcut hotkeys there. Control E. Or I like to hold shift, right click, pull down. Extrude edge. Now, if you notice, we get this weird variation. Every edge comes in a different. So we're going to use the thickness this time to get an equal thickness just a bit and then we're going to offset it offset will squeeze it in so we just need a little bit just to give it that beveled look on one side and you'll see it works well on the other side and that's way better <laughs> than the bevel that we tried to do. So it should look like this now. Nice and clean. It still has the cylindrical shape. All we've done is cut a hole through the pillar. We can get rid of this edge now. It's useless. Double click it. And here's the thing with deleting edges. If you double click and delete an edge with the delete key on your keyboard. Now go to your vertex, right click, vertex. Notice that the vertex for the edges is still there. Uh, that's, gonna, that's a big problem. What you want to do 
is use the delete function. So select the edge, double click it, and I don't actually, here it is, delete edge vertex. Edit mesh, delete edge vertex. You can add it to your shelf if you want, or I like to go, control, shift, sorry. I use shift, not control. I hold shift, right click, delete edge. Boom. Now you'll see if you go to your vertex again, right mouse button, vertex, uh, there's nothing there. All right. So now that we have that, that's the entire pillar. Uh, that's pretty much it. Everything else is uh, different objects. So now we can do the front camera, space bar, left click, pull down, front view, release. Now we get to make a cube. So again, create. Yeah, sorry. Create polygon primitives cube. It comes in super tiny. So remember, hold your right mouse button. Or sorry, press R on your keyboard to get your scale tool. And bring it up here. W, your move key. There it is. And now, just shape this using your your move and your scale to get the proper proper height and width but remember you want it to fit inside your pillar so what you can do so you can see see this bevel edge here right there and the bottom one here uh, that's the bottom that's the bottom and the top here so what you can do I'm gonna show you a few methods and some of them are a little more advanced ish so you can bring this over and eyeball it that's okay you don't want it to touch because in a real world gravity would make it touch the bottom one and it would never be tight because of wood swelling and growing when it comes to different temperatures uh, so let's set it on the bottom and to get it exactly on the bottom you can hold right mouse go to vertex grab these vertex points and you're gonna want to move them individually but in order to get them perfectly there you need to snap them to the vertex and you'd, you can snap by holding V See it changes your vertex, I mean your move tool, if you hold V down. And if you hold V, you can see it turn on up here. This is vertex snapping. So if we want it to move on the Y, select the Y, just left click, hold V. And then with your middle mouse button, click it and move it around just a little bit while you're holding V and that will snap it to the nearest vertex let's do the same with the top make sure you left click the Y arrow so it's working on the Y axis hold V and then middle mouse click and just shake it around the vertex and then you'll see it snap to that. But it shouldn't be tight, so let's just pull it down a little bit. 
there we go and then let's do the same from the right camera spacebar left click right view we can grab these vertexes press w but now we're working in the z-axis so click it make sure it's yellow so that it's highlighted hold v and then you can see the vertex right there hold v middle mouse click shake it and you'll see it snap to that vertex and then just pull it in a bit actually don't pull it in we'll do that after now do this side select the arrow hold v middle mouse click and snap and then you can grab the whole thing center your pivot again center pivot if you didn't put it on your shelf you can find it in modify <clears throat> center pivot and then just very very slightly grab this z-axis handle and pull it in there and then you can slide that in there and then go back to your front camera grab these vertex spacebar front view right click vertex and we're gonna go we're just gonna pull these all the way over here we're gonna grab these vertex points and we're gonna pull those all the way over here and then go back to our perspective hold space perspective left click up and there we go so that's that but now we're done with the pillar so we can select it control D duplicate it we can put it over to the mirror side and then remember on the y-axis we need to spin it 180 degrees and go back to perspective view there you have the start of your Tori. Uh, let's finish off this thing real quick. We just need to make all the edges beveled. That's really simple. Right click, go to edges, grab all of them, and just hit bevel. And then uh, if like I hit bevel, but I didn't get that little box to, to change the parameters. So we can go over here to the attribute editor. Sorry, select the object you want to change. Attribute editor over here. And then find the command that you just did in the shell. Here it is, bevel one. And then you get all the tools that we want to use. So let's just go like that. And there's your bevel. Now the object sits in there nicely. We can add some uh, ambient occlusion right here, this little ball. And that will make when objects are close to each other, it'll give them this dark shadow. Make it look like they're sitting in there more. That's that. So we went over quite a few tools there. Uh, different ways to use tools. Different places to find the same tools we've already learned. So hopefully that helps. And then if you'd like to go ahead, go ahead. But next time we will work on getting this uh, these two pieces we only need to make one and then we can duplicate it for the rest this is just a cube and then this bowed top bar so yeah there's that thank you
and good luck.